Good morning, Barry Bryson here. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. We're continuing our study of Paul's co-workers and today we're talking about Epaphras. There are two men that we know not from the book of Acts but from Paul's letters who are important co-workers of the Apostle Paul. One is named Epaphras and the other is named Epaphroditus. And although those are forms of the same name, these are two different men who are associated with two different congregations. And so we want to talk about them both because they're important examples. Um, and uh, we want to talk about them, them both uh, individually. Uh, we want to talk about Epaphras today. Epaphras is known solely from the Colossian correspondence. And when I say the Colossian correspondence, I mean the books of Col the letters of Colossians and Philemon. Because the book of Philemon is sent to uh, Philemon, who was a member of the church at Colossae. <clears throat> the preacher at Colossae is evidently Aristarchus. There are so many people that we could talk about that I'd like to talk about. We just, but, and I want to just go ahead and mention some of their names, you know. Like Onesimus, who is the slave that Paul sends back and says he's like a son to me, a son in the faith to me. Tychicus, who's mentioned multiple times, but really just about where he's headed. Demas, who we meet a few times and who deserts the Apostle Paul. Uh, Aristarchus, who is the preacher at Colossae uh, that is mentioned in Colossians. And Paul says, hey, Paul says to him, tell your preacher, do your job. At the very end of the book of Colossians, he tells him to do your job. I love that. Um, and uh, Archippus, um, Philemon himself, there are just so many people to talk about. But I, but I want to take a little bit of time to talk about Epaphras and Epaphroditus uh, because they are two different men and they're important at two different congregations. Um, uh, and we know uh, uh, Epaphras from the Colossian correspondence. And this is what we know about Epaphras from the Colossian correspondence. The first thing is that he's one of their own. I don't know that he was born and raised there, but he was the preacher who planted the church there and who raised up that congregation. Paul has never been to Colossae that we know of, but Colossae is one of the seven churches, excuse me, one of the churches of Asia. We know about the seven churches of Asia in the book of Revelation. Colossae is not mentioned there, but we know two other congregations in Asia, from Asia that are not mentioned in the book of Revelation. One is Colossae, and they get a letter. The other is Hierapolis, and they're mentioned multiple places, and they're mentioned in the Colossian correspondence. The church at Hierapolis and the church at Colossae are Asian churches, and we know from the book of Acts, when Paul was at Ephesus, chapter 19, that he, during his extended stay there, was able to evangelize all of Asia, Asia is a very large, very populous, very prosperous province, Roman province, in what is current day Turkey. And, um, and, and Colossae is there. We don't know that Paul visited there. We don't know that he didn't, but he didn't have a work there the way he had to work at Ephesus. And he says, uh, in his introduction, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, chapter 1, verse 3, praying always for, your, since we, for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. Paul has heard about the good congregation they are, which has come to you just as in all the world uh, is constantly bearing fruit and increasing, even it has been doing in you since the day you heard of it and understood the grace of God in truth as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved bond, fellow bond servant, who is faithful, who is a faithful servant in Christ on your behalf. Okay, so evidently the man who planted this church and who was the local preacher there who raised this church up is Epaphras. So Paul has a very um, intimate and precise knowledge of what's going on at this church. And what's going on at this church is false teaching. But they also, he has, a, he has a personal problem with this church, and that is what to do about Onesimus and Philemon. Philemon is the owner. Onesimus is the slave. Onesimus ends up in jail with Paul and is converted by Paul. And 
is now released and Paul is sending him back. And he wants him treated like a brother in Christ. In fact, he wants Philemon to free him and to send him back to serve Paul. But Paul's in jail and he can't affect all this. And so he writes this letter. We looked at that letter earlier in our five good minutes as a as a masterpiece of persuasion, especially when the person that you're trying to persuade doesn't want to do what you need them to do, especially when you don't have any earthly power to exert over them. Um, where did he get all this information? <clears throat> did he get it from Onesimus? Well, no. He also got it from Epaphras because not all because he describes Epaphras as a fellow bond servant. Well, that's not just a metaphor for something because he's in jail with Paul as well. At the end of chapter 4, he says in verse 12, Epaphras, who is one of your number, a bond slave of Jesus Christ, sends you greetings, always laboring earnestly for you in prayer that you may stand perfect and fully assured in the will of God. Epaphras is still working for you. He's doing it in jail, and he's doing it by praying. So Paul has had intimate knowledge of this congregation through his brother in Christ, Epaphras, whose path has crossed his path, as well as that of Onesimus. And one assumes that this all is piece, part of the same event uh, in jail. <clears throat> and God has brought them together in jail to serve the church at large. So they both get to continue to work for the Lord in the empire from jail in Rome. And Epaphras is there with Paul. Uh, we, we have one other verse that refers to him. Uh, Philemon, verse 23, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you. So in case we wondered whether, you know, fellow bondservant was a metaphor for anything, no. He's in jail with me, and he sends you greetings. So they really are in jail together. Um, anyway. That's what we know about Epaphras. Next time, we'll talk about Epaphroditus. Thank you for joining me for five good minutes.